This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by DoorDash. The app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. I guess I was the perfect age when Beethoven came out in 1992. I was 10 years old, loved big dogs, and kind of giggled when I saw he was teamed up with the guy who sung a love ballad to Miss Piggy. It was a big hit at the box office, earned several sequels, and even got an animated series based off it. And according to Rotten Tomatoes, is pretty universally hated. Really? I mean, I guess I can see someone not getting into it, but has it really earned being disliked? Directed by Brian Levant, who if you watch my show, you're very familiar with. I'll totally concede this is probably his best film. But does that make it a good film? I don't know, maybe my memory is fuzzy, but I remember this flick being brutally inoffensive. A kid-friendly film that's corny without being cringy. And a lot of that, let's be honest, comes down to the well-picked cast. Everybody, of course, remembers Charles Grodin and the St. Bernard, but the other performances, while safe, are memorable. They do just enough to make the joke work, but never go too over the top to make it uncomfortable. Unless that's the point of the performance. Yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. I can see most adults skipping the film, but if you saw this advertised somewhere, isn't this about what you'd expect? Okay, it's not Marley and me, but it's the equivalent of a TGIF movie. Hell, it's got some TGIF stars in it. I personally remember it being fine for a children's flick, but maybe I need to watch it again. So, that's what we're gonna do. Let's go back to a time when Everybody Loves Raymond did a crossover with the X-Files. This is Beethoven. The film opens with Oliver Platt and Stanley Tucci as two bumbling dog smugglers. Admittedly, not a good start. As our main villain, a veterinarian named Dr. Varnick, played by Dean Jones, says both the creepiest and non-creepiest line in any kid's film. I need puppies. How is anyone supposed to react to that? Imagine this guy walking into an animal shelter, somehow constantly backlit exactly how you see now, and he says, I need puppies. Would you laugh your ass off or give him a puppy because you're afraid his snake arms might bite you? I grew up with Dean Jones in a lot of Disney films where he's usually the main character but often teamed up with an animal sidekick. He plays this role like he wanted to eat every single one of those sidekicks. He is literally a vet who tests weapons on animals and loves the hell out of it. In most movies, I'd say that's pretty stupid, but because it's Dean Jones lit like a Marvel villain with his stapler guy glasses talking like a bear choking on Patty and Selma. Well, he'll be a little groggy this evening. It's some of the most enjoyable silly in the movie. <laughs> The rest of the film isn't quite as Dr. Giggles-ish as the credits roll, and we're introduced to Beethoven as a puppy, who's not having the best luck finding an owner. I got a junkyard. I need a big, mean junkyard dog. Man, Edward really messed her up with that sculpture, didn't he? You can make any dog mean. He pisses on her because really there's no other way this scene could go, and we cut to our burglars breaking in at night, stealing the puppies. This is done just as the writer's credit is revealed. Edmund Dantes? Wow, he must have written it in his shit while staying at the Chateau d'If. If you're wondering why the Count of Monte Cristo wrote this, it turns out it's a pen name John Hughes used to use. And yes, it was very fun to type into Google why was John Hughes Edmund Dantes when he wrote Beethoven. It sounds like a drunk Mad Libs. <laughs> it turns out he did this whenever he thought he was writing weaker material. Which is a great time to bring up. He left his name on all these movies. <laughs> Two of the dogs escape, including Beethoven, and he roams the neighborhood stumbling across the Newton family, with Charles Grodin playing the father, George. A part of me does feel bad because this guy has been some of the best films ever made, and he's mainly known for this. Hell, most of the headlines when he died labeled him as the star of Beethoven, but he really does play the part perfectly. Never going too big or too subtle. Just look at this reaction when the paperboy gives him literal bad news. Aren't you excited to spend a movie with this guy? <laughs> the rest of the family isn't bad either. Again, very sitcom-y, but a harmless sitcom. 
The director did have an issue hiring Bonnie Hunt as Alice as there was an almost 30 year age difference between her and Grodin. But producer Ivan Reitman said the chemistry was too good and much like the main couple in Jurassic Park, both these dudes look a lot younger than they really are. If you can believe it, Grodin was 56 when he made this. To give you an idea, I'm 41 and I look older than him in this movie! <laughs> Beethoven sneaks into the room of the youngest kid, Emily, and the family thinks George bought the family a new pet. Mom, look, I dreamt I had a puppy and it came through! Ew. That line sounds weird as an adult. I dreamt I had a puppy and it came through! I dreamt Huckleberry Hound was the father and I might need to see a therapist, but still, a puppy! As you'd imagine, George is less than happy to have a dog in the house. Sniff, they lick, they chew, they drool, they scratch. Alice, they have parasites. Oh, God, yeah. Reitman was correct. These two really do have a believable chemistry. They work really well off each other, even when they tried to throw each other under the bus. How should we handle this? Go tell the kids. If anything, it'll put our pet ducks back in order. Look, they're so terrified, they're frozen in place. When George tries to tell them they can't have a dog, it goes about as well as you'd think. I mean, I've decided. I knew it. I knew anyone who bought me a nightgown from the Waltons wasn't gonna let me have a pet. You better think of something to name because when I come home and he destroys my house, I want to know what to call him! He does change his mind and they try to figure out what to call him. Well, I don't think words for parts of the body make really very good names. But he's got one of those I looked. Okay, admittedly, a lot more people would like this film if it was just called Prick. They decide on Beethoven because he barks to Beethoven's music. I don't know, the writers from the 1800s make sense. And as he continues to grow, George's patience shrinks. Oh, another one of those rainy, perfectly sunny days. What, did the paperboy knock your sprinkler on the roof? Where's that water coming from? No, no. So yeah, okay, this isn't that funny a scene, but I like watching it because I like watching Grodin. His misery is just fun to watch. I feel like that's why I put up with a lot of stuff I've seen in this a million times. I legit like these actors and buy them as a family. They're the people you hang out with, okay, when all the other people you hang out with aren't around, but you're friends with them for a reason. You still like them. Ladies and gentlemen, the screen debut of Joseph and Gordon Levitt. That was the screen debut of Joseph and Gordon Levitt. Beethoven tours the town that's so friendly to dogs you'd swear Italian stereotypes will go bonkers trying to get him to bang, and we see he's still friends with the dog who originally broke him out. Thanks. What do you say about helping me find a home? Can't help you. It looked like you had a nice place to stay. Can't help you. I saved your life. Now you know better. Meanwhile, at George's air freshener company. God, I want to put my hand up there to find the red flag. He tries to sweet talk some investors, played by David Duchovny and Patricia Heaton. I could use that in my beamer. I could use it in my beamer. Well, we feel a lot of people could use them in their beamers. Can we not talk about putting things in people's beamers, you weird dialogue? His son Ted is mocked by some bullies, though do they really have much to make fun of him for? I know I've seen this kid high-five some weird things a lot of McDonald's ads. I have a sudden and overwhelming urge for some fries. Mm. Yes! Yeah. But Beethoven scares them off, letting Ted take all the credit. a great impression of how I look greeting myself in the morning. Don't think I can show this scene without playing this clip. Someone's kissing me. It must be a beautiful woman. Now, I'll make sweet love to you while keeping my eyes closed the whole time. What are you talking about? The most rewatched scene by Zoo File since Gene Wilder said hi to a sheep. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, you got something nice to send to a loved one. That's really cool. Why don't you just go ahead and... Oh, no. Well, I, I really thought it would be easy, but no. Uh, mailing is hard. Life is hard. I, I can't life. I can't life today. No. All those people in the infomercials were right. I can't things. But, you know, shut up, because they're stamps. I mean, most of us may not even think about the person who's on the sending end of our, our packages when we shop online or, or sending out a gift or something. Unless, of course, unless you're the one doing the package. Just look how hard this is. So today, in partnership with Stamps.com, I want to take a second to pack an order with you. And, and you can just see how difficult this is. I just want to send this out and... And it's not, because it's important to remember that literally every time you get a package from a small business or just or just someone really smart like me, someone had to take time to pack it, tape it, and mail it to you. 
And you know, stamps.com, they make it easier, a lot easier. Darn it. Because jeesh, using the free scale stamps.com provides you to weigh your shipment is really helpful. And using the rate advisor to calculate the most affordable method to ship, also good. And the dashboard where all the shipment info is stored? Thanks, stamps.com, you made this less bad. Why don't you just like, do it slowly? Like, like don't overthink it. That's good! That's real good, okay. I have stamps.com to thank for that. So next time you order something online, take a second to appreciate the person who packed that order for you. And if you're on the other end of that order, give Stamps.com a try. Because right now, you can go to Stamps.com slash Nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. That's Stamps.com slash Nostalgia. And boy, that sure worked up an appetite. Why don't I have myself a snack? Oh no! No, 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 I can't food. No, it, it, it's not happening today. It's not fooding today. Well, you can try forever to figure out this advanced science, or you can use DoorDash. Missing the syrup for your pancakes, or just ran out of your favorite coffee creamer? With DoorDash grocery delivery, you can get what you want right when you need it. Don't be like this brilliant man who can't figure out this sorcery. Because you've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. That looks so difficult, guy, who's not me, even though I, I might have said it was me before, but but it's not. It's, uh, another me. I, I, yeah, how's this work? You'll get exactly what you ordered, or we'll make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. Want even more value, you hopeless so-and-so? You can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a DoorDash membership. With easy substitutions right in the app and best-in-class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. That's good, isn't it? It's very good. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $10 value when you use the code MOVIETIME at checkout. That's 50% off up to $10 on a $15 min subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code MOVIETIME. Don't forget, that's code MOVIETIME for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. I'm gonna... I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm doing it with DoorDash. plays Jedi Survivor every Friday on Twitch. We also have content five days a week. Hope to see you there. Beethoven is taken to the evil vet who sees an opportunity to test a new weapon on larger dogs. There's been quite a bit written about certain behavioral problems with the breed. He suggests the idea that St. Bernards are overbred and can turn on their owner or their family in a heartbeat. First, first snarl, first any kind of weirdness, and he's gone. What should I watch for, hun? Is wearing my clothes around the house? I had one night of passion. I mean horror! They get a babysitter for the kids, who I swear is a horizontal flip of Eddie McClurg, who doesn't keep an eye on everyone as Emily starts drowning in the pool while she continues to sing songs. You wanna give it a go? Kitschy, kitschy, ya, ya, da, da. You're not into it now, but wait until Baz Luhrmann whores it up, then you'll love it! Beethoven, of course, hears the cries and jumps in to save her. I think my favorite is he can somehow sense she's going to be in trouble miles away, even before she falls in. My doggy sense is going! Woof! After he does save her, she says he has to go back because he'll get in trouble. You better go home now. Mom said to stay in the backyard. What I wouldn't give for his tail to knock her back in and say, Oh, sorry, I'm supposed to be in the backyard, you ungrateful bitch. I thought I was gonna die. Now, we don't want you to get into trouble, so we'll let this be our little secret. To be fair, she's not exactly the best at looking after kids. <laughs> the babysitter is fired, and the investors are brought over to their house for a barbecue. Where thankfully Beethoven understands business trade as he overhears their plan to take over George's job. We pull this off. We go home. New auto air fresheners. Touch it. I believe this calls for a moi ha ha. Nah, after gin and tonics. Just a moi then. Okay, moi. Also, there's passive aggressive and then there's aggressive aggressive. Alicia. Alan. Alan. Can I have a refill, please? Oh, I just love these big, dumb animals. Dogs obey so much better than children, don't they? Come here. Oh. Also, what's with arson going down? It used to be everywhere. Remember arson? Beethoven wraps the leash around their chair and takes him for a ride. I'm really 
realizing more and more this movie isn't really fun to laugh at, but it is fun to watch. Like, I love when you pause it, you can clearly see how the effect is done, and apparently George and Alice were so shocked they switched actors in between scenes. Also, I can't believe I've never noticed in all the times I've seen this scene, Bonnie Hunt, rather than help save these two, instead saves the vegetable tray. What a nice little touch. Again, it's not great, but are you not entertained? I really don't like our dog. Grodin and Hunt again share a really nice scene together, saying the usual stuff you hear in films like this about the overworking husband ignoring his family, but when they talk about it, you legit listen. My dream's going down the drain and you're worried about a dog. Your family's going down the drain and you're worried about a dream. Great, at least we see eye to eye. After the most fake game playing I've seen in a film for some time. At least mine. I get the next one. Okay, fine. Get that question blocked. It's not multiplayer. What are you doing? Granted, he could be playing the power glove, right? I've just never seen anyone actually do it. The evil vet drops by, accompanied by his own evil music. Ah. Ah, Mrs. Newton. Sorry, our door creaks in the weirdest way. We're trying to fix it. He says he's following up on Beethoven's rabies shots, but it's actually an attempt to frame him and make it look like he attacked him, even though the vet was the first one to strike first. I saw you! You hit Beethoven! Why would I hit Beethoven? Even when he's trying to sound reasonable, he sounds like a pirate gargling hunter as Thompson. Once an animal crosses the line and attacks a human being, you can rest assured he'll do it again. By the way, I'm Batman! Or whatever I'm trying to do with this voice. Mm. He says if Beethoven isn't handed over, he'll have to press charges, leaving George with no choice. Where are we going? Are we going to the Happy Factory where they make happy? No thank you, I have enough happy. <coughs> Again, for as silly as the writing is, none of the actors are sleepwalking through this. They're giving the most that's asked of them in every scene. I know you won't believe me, but I don't want to do this. I understand. Seriously, if he kept repeating that and Beethoven broke down in his arms, I would buy it. He hands him over to the evil vet and his family looks at him like, well, he just took their dog to be put down. Dog killer! More of that trademark Edmund Dantes writing. On that note, I do legit like this line. Beethoven made this house real. He put the dents in it. To be fair, the film had more than enough dents without his help. They have a change of heart and go back to question the vet about what happened, only to find out they were duped. You hit me, I'll have you put in jail for assault and battery. <laughs> Whoa! Dad. Really, hon, I never thought you were more attractive. Thanks. I mean, I know our dog might be dead, but punching the guy from the Herbie movies gets me hot for some reason. They try calling the cops, but they don't give a shit. Shame, this could have been an amazing crossover. And they follow the vet to where they're holding Beethoven. If I'm not back in 15 minutes, call the police. So, you know, they can laugh at us again. Why don't you say you're breaking into a place? They'll oddly enough get him down there. <laughs> Beethoven breaks loose and goes after the thugs, and I'm a simple man. I laugh pretty hard when a guy has a high-pitched scream. <laughs> but don't be reviewing movies in that voice or you'll look like a fool. George breaks in just in time to save Beethoven, while Beethoven's boyfriend, girlfriend, I never knew what they were, saves George. <laughs> when you suddenly realize the only reason they gave him those Coke bottle glasses was to make his reaction funnier when he got bit in the nuts. It kind of works. The kids drive into the place, resulting in one of the most surreal non-deaths in a kid's film. <laughs> Great, I'm gonna be pissing Skittle colors for a week. And Beethoven is reunited with his family. The folks try to escape but get caught in a junkyard that honestly I always wondered if this lady owned. <laughs> we'll be reunited in the imposters. <laughs> of course nobody dies, though granted it is kind of worth it just to see this shot. But there is the question of what's to be done with all the other dogs. Good night, Murphy. Good night, Sam. Good night, Beethoven's second. Good night, Beethoven's third. Good night, saddest Google search I've done asking how many Beethoven sequels there are. Good night, saddest results. And that was Beethoven. I can see why someone wouldn't get into it, but for a kids film that's over 30 years old, I think it's okay. It's harmlessly wholesome, a film that doesn't try to be any more than what it is. 
If Marley and Me is Toy Story 2, then this is Sing 2. It's in one ear and out the other, but for the short time it's in your brain, it's not a bad stay. Again, most of that is from the acting, which again isn't spectacular, but could have easily been half-assed, and nobody ever really does that. Yes, I'll admit I would have liked it more if it was just a story about a big dog learning to adapt to a big family, but even when it does get weird with the evil vet, it's still an entertaining kind of weird. And sometimes, that's okay. Not my nostalgia career again. Excuse me, someone's at the door. I need puppies. It's Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month, so for cameos for charity, we're doing the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. This is the world's leader in the search for a cure for cystic fibrosis and supports a broad range of research initiatives to tackle the disease from all angles. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday, good luck, or whatever, click on the link in the description and be giving to a good cause. If you're like your face is ass and I hate you, well, consider giving to this charity anyway, because it's full of good people doing great work. Check them out and see what you can do to help out.